Questions for the champ, guys. Yes. Yes. Uh, could you rate your performance from zero to ten? Um, I would have to go back and really watch watch the fight, but I feel like I, I, I put a, a great performance on. I really was just warming up. I didn't get a chance to really you know, let my hands go like I like I wanted to. Like I said, I was just warming up. I, I started to let my hands go, and then the fight was slow. Was planning to like heat up and like the fifth, sixth, seventh? Just like you're shooting the gas, controlling the distance. It seemed like uh, you said earlier. You need to leave first gear. Yeah, uh, coming in the fight, my dad told me just to go in there, use my jab, stay relaxed, um, let everything come, and that's what I did. I, I went in there, uh, I, was, I started working the body, I started warming up, I started, you know, uh, catching his rhythm, seeing what he was going to, seeing what he was doing, and then um, the fight was pretty much stopped. Okay, this was typically one of the hardest opponents uh, to date. Do you like that? Um. Uh, Abdullah, he, he is a tough opponent. I just went in there, I put on a great performance, and uh, I made him look easy, but if he fought anyone else, he might be a tough fight for them. You know, he was undefeated. You know, he, he, he was the number two contender. He was a WBC silver champion, and, like, and on paper, he was supposed to be my hardest opponent. So I went in there, I trained very hard for this fight. Um, I sacrificed a lot. Uh, I had a good training camp, and uh, I went in there, and, and I made the fight look easy. But, you know, for anybody else, who knows how if, if he would give them a test or not. Uh, maybe his cheek was broken. Do you know what you caught him with? Uh, yeah, it it, it, uh, it looked like it was a right hook that I caught him with. But like I said, I really I really don't know. I hit him. I started hitting him with some good shots. I hit him with some good uppercuts, uh, some good right hooks, some good jabs. So I, I really don't know what shot did it. But um, I hit him with a jab, and it, and his nose just started uh, started leaking. So I'm, I'm re I don't really know what shot it was. The doctor said they think it was a nose and a cheekbone, both broken. Hey Devin, uh, we, we spoke um, about your last knockout and you got a stoppage here. Which one did you like better? The two different style, I mean type of knockouts or stoppages? Could you pick which one you preferred? Um, on paper, Abdelab was you know, a, a much tougher opponent. A lot of people were saying that he, this was going to be a real test. He was going to go in there and, and, and make it a dog fight. He was a very hard puncher. So this performance means more. Uh, of course, you know the, the knockout was sensational. It was a, a viral knockout. But um, this this fight meant a lot more. Now uh, Eddie and Devin, obviously the fight now being over, everything seems to check out uh, on the medical side at least um, from what it seems. Are we going to see Devin back November the 9th in, in Los Angeles? Yeah, that's the plan. I mean, we're going to talk to Bill and, and Devin. I mean, obviously, in the ring after the, the adrenaline's going, and they both said 100%, let's go for that. The slot's there for him. I think he's the absolute perfect audience for Devin Haney. You know, millions of young people watching around the world. I think if you're going to bring someone into the sport of boxing, you know what Lou said, I don't think, you know, these people necessarily will stick to boxing. Well, they won't if they don't see something that makes them go, wow. Luckily, we've got something that makes you go, wow. And that's Devin Haney. So with these millions of young people watching around the world, if they witness Devin Haney, they're going to be a fan and they're going to stick. So if Bill and Devin say tomorrow, Monday, tonight, November 9th, it's eight weeks tonight, perfect. You know, can have a little, little rest for a few days and then uh, I think that would be the perfect platform sold out Staples Center. I got a question for Eddie. Eddie, is the press conference tomorrow? Is it yeah. You think I can get the first flight out to the press conference out there in LA? You want to do that? Yeah, I, I, I think you so. Sure? I think so. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm ready for November 9th. I, uh, I went in there, I didn't take, you know, hardly any punishment. Of course, I had a, a hard training camp, you know, so of course I want to take a few days off, but I, I want to get back in the ring as soon as possible. Now, I know you haven't been on your phone, you've been taking care of other things, but Logan Paul actually mentioned Eddie yeah, Hearn really and requested for you to be on that on the car. He said, Eddie, could we make this happen? So well, he's a big fan. He was watching tonight. And, uh, you know, some, there's been a lot of chat from, like I said, from the internet saying, oh, you know, it's, uh, it's an insult, a fighter going on the undercard of a fight. Like, you know, it's, it's 20,000 people at Staples Center. It's millions of people watching around the world. That's called a global platform to showcase your talent. Devin, speaking of a global platform to showcase your talent, is there any uh, style of opponent or a specific opponent that you'd want to showcase what you're made out of on the undercard of World of Ball? 
Um, that's really up to my team. You know, uh, I'm I'm willing to fight whoever, and I've been saying this for you know a long time. Whoever they put in front of me, you know, I, I'll be you know I'm, I'm able to adjust to anybody. I feel like I'm one of the best fighters in the world, and I'm willing to you know showcase my skills against whoever they put in front of me. You just had like the past video. Jeff's so fight proud to be on the card of that or is it on Say it again? Jeff's so fight proud to be on the card of the Oh, uh, no, you know, um, they, they have a big following and, you know, I, like you said, I just head right here, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going on their card and I'm, I'm happy to be on the card, you know, um, like I said, it's good for boxing and uh, it's going to bring a lot more fans, you know, to Devin Haney and to boxing period. Yeah, you're good. Uh, congratulations. On Thank you. Uh, your your poise in your ring is, is unbelievable. It, it, it shows that you're it's showing that you're a lot older than, than only twenty. Uh, but talk about your dad and what he means to you in your professional career. Uh, what he brings to the table in boxing. Um, my dad means so much. You know, he means everything to my career. My dad was the first person you know who brought me to the gym. He taught me how to throw my my first jab when before I was even boxing. You know, he taught me how to put my hands up, you know, and just protect myself. So um, my dad means a lot. You know, without my dad, I wouldn't be here. You know, my dad, he, he came up, you know, really with the, the game plan to, to go in there in the ring tonight. And I just went in there and executed it. Um, you know, like I said, without my dad, I wouldn't be where I'm at. You know, and I'm, I'm thankful for him. And um, I, I, I appreciate him. You know, he, he doesn't he doesn't get it. Uh, a, a lot of attention because you know people they they try to say oh, oh this trainer this trainer but really my dad is behind you know the, the science behind behind Devin Haney. Trainer of the year.